The, um, so I'll go ahead and start. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I appreciate the opportunity um, for us to be here tonight to talk about the Front Royal Golf Club. A lot of positives, a lot of angst associated with the golf club. I think, you know, it, it has been for many, 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 many decades a tremendous asset for the community. I am not a, a, a born here, but you, you talk to folks that born and raised in this community, that's where they learned to swim or that's where they learned to play tennis or play golf. Um, it meant a lot to this community for, and families for many, many decades. Um, back in 2005, um, the Front Royal Golf Club, the private entity that um, ran the club, reached out to uh, the chair of the board, who I believe at that time was Mr. Carter, and the mayor at that time, who I believe was Jim Easton, and said, you know, we're struggling. Um, this golf club property was given to the citizens of Front Royal Warren County uh, back in 1938. Uh, would you guys be willing to consider operating the golf course under the arm of, of Parks and Recreation? October 1, 2000, the county had taken, taken over Parks and Recreation from the town of Front Royal and assumed management of all the Parks and Rec facilities. Um, the town made it very clear, I think, at that point, if it's going to be a Parks and Rec function, it would fall under the county. Uh, the board... Uh, discussed the proposal and ultimately made the decision to assume management of the golf club and Dan I can't remember it was like April of 05 I believe so right, like right. um, the county at the time paid off the debt that the club had on the new clubhouse part of and, and I won't you know, let our uh, advisory board members go around and introduce themselves here in a second but part of that 1996, you had a, a, the January 96 flood where the snow melted in less than 12 hours and major flood on the river, which flooded the golf course and flooded the clubhouse. And then you had the Hurricane Fran, which really uh, did a number on the facility as well. Those two things ultimately led the club at the time to building a new clubhouse up above the railroad tracks outside of the 100-year um, floodplain and um, incurred debt at the time. So the county paid off, I want to say about 400, 450,000 in debt. I think there's also, that was for the clubhouse and whatever, but there's also that individual contract too. That lease was additional to right. that amount. Yes. It was more like 550, I think. The <coughs> county, and it's some of that is in your packet, there's a PowerPoint that we put together back in 18 that explains a little bit about that history. We subsequently sold right of way in the easements to Trail Co. who was building the second 500 kV power line which the county got about 600 some thousand. In essence the county was paid back for what it expended to take over the, um, the debt uh, for the club. Um, since 2005, um, <clears throat> and a lot of the financial history and background is in the packet. Um, yeah, first few years, the county was doing relatively well from the standpoint of, you know, 70, 90 percent of operations versus uh, were covered by revenue at the facility. Um, at some point in there, you started to see revenue dip and expenses obviously keep going up and um, you started to see that delta grow larger. We had the advantage there for a few years of leasing some of this. There's about an original 60 acres that goes with the golf club. And there's an additional 40 acres that was separate, not part of that original gift, was purchased later by the golf club. The county had leased to uh, Dominion as contractors for the laydown area for the construction of the power plant. Um, the annual rent on that property was 100000 There was one year, it was a partial payment. All that money was applied to the, the basically the the balance, the, the bottom line of the golf club. So that helped us for a few years there to mitigate uh, losses from the operations of the club. Of course, when the power plant was completed and that went away, you lost that 100000 There were for a few years, we had a couple ground leases from a pipeline construction company and other construction company just leasing small areas of that property for laydown that we were able to do to, again, offset, there he is, offset some of those costs. Um, the county originally 
made the decision to look at um, trying to bring in a hotel on that upper 40 acres of the property to bring in additional revenue to offset the operating loss of the golf club and the board supported that. We actually were had put an RFP out for a hotel. <coughs> we had uh, interest and then the Great Recession hit and that interest that uh, developer ended up pulling back away and walking from the table. Um, what you have in the packet, I believe, was the fifth RFP, Request for Proposal, the county had put out, trying to solicit um, other entities, firms, groups that might be interested in operating um, the golf club. Primarily, the first one or two were just operate the golf club. Subsequent ones had or other types of uses. Um, over without getting specifics we had a proposal at one time that wanted to kind of do partly golf and partly some other uses including some river uses down along the river and that one uh, <coughs> ultimately um, we never reached consensus with the committee to bring it forward to the board um, later we had another um, group that was interested in, in not going forward with uh, the golf course but look at other recreational uses of the property but also we look at the potential for selling nutrient credits and being able to um, reforest some of the property and turn it to a more natural state, which you could do trails and other things, zip lines and other things within that property. Um, the group, I think, and I'll let the committee speak for themselves later, but we, we've, we've got a good uh, proposal to bring you tonight that um, keeps it in the original desired intent to use this facility as a golf course and that really would bring private professional management of a golf course uh, to address the specific needs of this facility but also take advantage of the attributes of the facility. Um, so uh, with that, before I turn it over to Mr. Bird, let him do a quick presentation for you talking about what his idea is for New Direction uh, Golf Management. A lot of the specific specifics obviously would have to be negotiated between the county uh, and uh, the contract itself with uh, New Directions, but um, I think really at this point, just wanting to bring the concept to see uh, is the board supportive of the concept and us being able to move forward. So with that, um, Chris, if you would go around the table just to our advisory board members to introduce yourselves to the board so they get to know who you are. Yeah, I'm Chris Lyon. I've uh, been with the board since um, last October. I had met Tony, and Tony asked me to join on to see if I could offer some help. But try to keep the place open and, and doing our best to try to do so. I think Mike's proposal looks like a good proposal to try to keep it like it was supposed to be as a golf course. I'm, I'm Henry Linger. I live on uh, South Marshall Street and I grew up in Front Royal and in the 70s I was a teenager that went to Front Royal Country Club and learned to golf, played on the golf team, went to the pool. And, you know, I remember the glory days. It was really nice. So it's really to me, a historic property, and um, it's close to town. It's, it's always been nice. And I just joined the board last fall, so I'm new to the board, but from the, you know, what we've heard, I really felt good about it, because, you know, looking at it financially, I was like, woo, you know, it's a, you know, it's definitely losing money, and, and uh, I think we, they have a lot of really good new ideas that'll put us more on the modern side of, the industry, and we're today we're just sort of, you know, barely getting by. So I, I think it's a real nice proposal. Okay. Yeah, Ken Rocco, I've been on the uh, on the board for a little well a year, I guess, in that type of way. Um, and um, I've I've been coming to Front Royal uh, for eight years since I bought property here. Um, why haven't I just finished the house a year and a half ago? So actually, we're officially here. Um, uh, I think that the golf course has a lot of potential, um, and I think that the what new direction brings is appealing to a whole generation that may be somewhat foreign to some of us, <laughs> uh, because you know they're they're looking for the experience, and you hear, hear the word a lot. You got guest experience and so on and so forth. And I think the experience that uh, new dimensions will bring uh, will be unique. And will be creative, 
and will be very appealing to the public and affordable at the same time. So I think that's a, a very key portion of this. I'm Pat Southard. Um, actually, I guess I'm the longest on the board in this group. <laughs> Everybody's new, which doesn't mean much. Um, and I'm just concerned. I'm a golfer, and I think it's a wonderful course, and I think they have a wonderful presentation for you. I hope you listen and thank you. So Dan Lentz, our Parks Rec Director, is also on the board as is Mr. Carter as the board rep. Is there anything that I've missed that you think we ought to be just mentioned tonight before we start? No. We're good. So with that, Mike? We're ready, huh? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> wonderful. Well, it was really clear. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. Uh, obviously, this uh, means a lot to those of you that are on the advisory committee, and obviously, it's an important asset in the community for the Board of Supervisors. First of all, again, my name is Mike Bird. I'm the president of New Direction Golf Management. We're a new company uh, with lots of experience, that of which I'll tell you a little bit later. I also brought with me Kayla Weaver, who is um, absolutely my most dynamic uh, and most important asset to New Direction. So I want to introduce Kayla Weaver. Um, she's not going to talk because if she talks tonight, then we're not going to make our half an hour. No. <laughs> it's bad enough when I get up here and talk. About it. Um, but uh, we, we, those of you that uh, saw us in the last presentation, hopefully we're going to be able to see the presentation a little bit better than we did the last time. Um, we'll try not to get as chatty as we did last time. We'll try to nail down some important points. The difference is, is that um, what is New Direction compared to any other management company? I started my company two years ago, and the reason that I started my company is I was looking at all the other management companies, and I made an observation. They were very good at getting people uh, to the door, but they weren't good at keeping them in the building, either with their customer experience or with the programs and initiatives that are absolutely integral to growing the game of golf. So at the end of the day, my company is, is built on the passion for the game and the efforts of taking that to the customer. It's a player development company. Now what is player development? Player development means a couple of different things. We, we hear the word uh, growing the game. Player development means what are you doing to create golfers, what are you doing to develop golfers, and what are you doing to sustain their interest. Most people that are on the outside of the business looking in are going, what's wrong with golf? We see golf courses closing at a, uh, a big rate okay, since about 2004. I've been in this business for 33 years and I've seen the ups and the downs. And I can tell you that in the 33 years that I've been in this business, golf has really never been in a better place. Okay, that's hard to imagine because we hear about all these golf courses closing and, and counties struggling to get uh, their courses profitable. Well, so what New Direction does is we focus in, instead of trying to get up one golfer in our door or two golfers in our door and offering two for one specials and all that kind of stuff, what we have is we have programs that attracts to golfers that don't even know they're golfers. We have programs that once they've been in the door, that we can take them to the next level and develop them. And then we have golfers that have been playing a long time that need to be rejuvenated with their interest into the game. That centers around golf leagues, all kinds of social activities, those of which I will not get in because if I talk about all those, we are definitely not going to be 35 minutes here. <laughs> so um, that, that is New Direction. That's what separates us a little bit from some of the other management companies. We don't have a big fancy um, uh, marketing uh, piece of our company that says we do this and says we do this, and then we, when you come to find out it really doesn't do this and doesn't do that. We are who we say we are. We get you in the door. We find out who you are. We inform you on what we have and then we take you through the process, okay? So that's what New Direction is all about. Uh, what was that? So I, a mo moment ago, I, I spoke about the state of the industry. So in, in my 33 years, I've never seen the PGA Tour in a better place. So 
we have this bonus that we have Tiger Woods playing in a, in a high level, and that's all exciting. Everybody's excited about that. But even before Tiger Woods came on, the PGA Tour is more interactive with its customers, you know, people watching. It's, uh, uh, it's exciting. We have more good players playing at, that, at a high level, so you don't just have one dominating. You have multiple dominating. Because of the social media, they're all interacting with their, with their, uh, their big fans. So it's really in a good place. And then, of course, the LPGA Tour has never been in a better place either. Their fans, uh, they have a whole new group of fans that they never had before. So we have two major players in the industry that are doing fantastic. Now you take the other piece, the PGA of America, an organization that I've been uh, belonged to for 20, 23 years. 23 years. Um, for many, many years throughout the 80s, throughout the 90s, and early 2000s, the PGA was just like every golf course up owner. If we build it, they will come. And then 2004 came and everybody went, oh, we have too many golf courses. And what happens, we've seen it, we've seen it. I, I was in a community in a small town in Medford, Oregon, had 200,000 people in, in Jackson County. We had one 18-hole golf course in 1992. We did 70,000 rounds in a year. 70,000 rounds in a year. We needed another golf course. So in 1993, we got one. 1994, we got one. 1995, we got one. And 1996, we got one. Those 70,000 rounds went like this. And nobody was prepared on what to do next. So everybody started doing what, unfortunately, Front Royal has done, which is lower the rates, lower the rates, lower the rates. And all that tells your customers is that your product's not very good. Your services aren't very good. What you have to offer is not very good, okay? So it's taken us all a, a little bit of time to figure out how we need to do this. And at the end of the day, our responsibility is to grow the game today and ensure that we have the growth of the game in the future. So looking at the state of the business, we have two, two areas of the, pop, of the player types that are growing at a very fast rate. Our baby boomers and our retirees are growing. We have a very, very uh, big group of players from that category. And more exciting than that is that our junior golf has never been better. So PGA Junior League is something that this area does not have. It's one of the few areas in Virginia that does not have a PGA Junior League. If you have a soccer league, you should have a PGA Junior League. If you have a basketball or, or baseball league, you should have a PGA Junior League. Absolutely. So we started ours down in the Stafford area five years ago, and it was, it was, uh, there was some reluctancy. A lot of the golf course operators thought, oh my gosh, I can't handle one more thing. What we had to convince them of is that it's not about that. Just like a soccer league. Who, who coaches the soccer league? The parents. <coughs> who coaches the basketball teams? The parents. That's what we had to do is we had to get them involved. So five years ago, we had 12 kids that were ready to go on our team, and nobody else could get it together. We had over 300 kids in our program last year. 300 kids in Stafford, Fredericksburg area that were in it. 61,000 kids played, participated in PGA Junior League last year. It's a very, very critical part to any golf community. So what I'm telling you is, <coughs> if we are chosen to come in and lead this uh, community in, in golf, uh, we will pull everybody with us. So golf will get healthier. Everybody will get healthier. They'll have an option. You either join, you either get, get on board and let's grow the game together collectively, or you know some will fall. But we hope everybody, at the end of the day, what we hope is that everybody, whether you're, you're at uh, uh, Bowling Green or you're at one of the other facilities, and of course, this minute I tried to remember one of them, it just, I remember, I know, it just went out my head. Um, I, I went to all of them. Um, but uh, we hope that everybody will, will benefit from it. We've seen it in the Stafford area. Uh, those that were a little bit reluctant in um, some of our outside the box thinking and, and, and the things that we tried, they, uh, they, they eventually got on board and they saw the benefit and they're starting to work. They're, they're still behind us because that's our goal. Our goal is to lead and always be one step ahead of our competition. As we look at Front Royal, and we're going to talk about this, um, 
And in, in any anybody that's been in business, the most important thing is you got to know who you are. Okay, so uh, we have what 108 holes of golf in this area. About right. I think it's not right. So there's a lot of options. And when I look at a golf course, I look at it as nine holes. So X Y Z golf course has 18 holes, but in my mind they have two nines. Uh, Front Royal happens to have one nine. Okay. So as I look at it, I go, okay, well, Front Royal is a nine that has nine holes of golf to offer. Why is that nine holes, just because it's a nine hole golf course, why does that nine holes cost less than this nine holes? I went and slayed every one of these golf courses. And I evaluated it, and I'm pretty up to speed on what, what healthy turf looks like versus unhealthy turf. And this golf course, one of the main reasons that I jumped on it was I felt it like it was a high quality golf course. I feel like it has weaknesses, which we'll point out here shortly. But I felt like it was high. It was a high quality golf course, so I played it. And as some of you know, that I when I went out to play it, I knew what the rates were going to be. I looked them up, and of course, when I put my performer together, I looked at it. I walked up and I paid four dollars. So I've been in this business since 1986. I worked at a golf course that had nine holes in 1986. We charged six dollars and fifty cents back then. I paid four dollars at this golf course. Now the good news is, is I bought a soda and a candy bar, and I think it cost four dollars as well. But anyway, so there's there's some fundamental changes. So that tells me that we just we have something wrong with this product, and there is nothing wrong with that product. To me, it's got a lot of interesting. It's got an interesting layout. It's got tons of opportunity about 300 yards away. It's got beautiful scenery on the other side of the facility, and it's got something really cool that runs right through the middle of it. How do, you, how do you sell that? Now, I think that is one of the coolest things of that golf course. So I'm going to talk about this. So as I look at the golf industry, or I look at any business, those of you, again, that were in, are in business, you understand this. If you're in business, it's, it's a, you're pedaling uphill all the time. And in, when you're doing that, you've got to have the best equipment, and you've got to have strong legs, and you've got to power your way through it. As I look at a lot of golf courses, this not just Front Royal, but this Front Royal is, is the one we're talking about, it's been coasted, trying to coast uphill. Not really understanding, not for any bad intentions, just didn't quite understand how the dots got connected. So that's what we have to change. We have to be that, that leader, we have to make sure that, and I feel honestly that it is a Absolute responsibility. There's a lot of a lot of golf course operators that look at municipalities and they they dislike them because they tend to do lower the rates and then everybody else has to lower the rates and so and there's nothing su substantial to it. What what has to happen as a municipality is you have to lead the way in growing the game. It has to be the one the hub of all that activity and then it. The enthusiasm for the county goes full, go, grows. So that's what we would have to do. Um, so we would not, we would be pedaling our butts off to uh, get up that hill. Uh -oh. Kayla, just touch the screen. Should I turn it off? She gave you a good remote. There you go. Ah, just so, so I don't need this. No. Okay. Uh, In my day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I put together a SWOT analysis as I was looking at this property. Um, it, was a, it was a fun project because, uh, you know, as you look at it, you, you go, man, it's, it's nine holes. It's kind of been abandoned. It used to be a country club. It's no longer a country club. So um, let's, let's go dig deep and figure out what, what's positive first. Uh, community support. You're all here tonight. Uh, obviously, unlike Stafford County, you have a golf advisory committee. I think that's fantastic. That keeps everybody in check, and it gives um, it's that liaison to this board here. So what's going on? Uh, good course conditions. We're not walking into a mess. I've seen a mess, and it's not fun to overcome that. Uh, the greens are smooth. Uh, the greens are fast. I think we'll talk about some of the weaknesses in that area in just a minute. I think it's got a very interesting layout. From a better player standpoint, I looked at it very closely. I thought it was very interesting, but I think it's very user-friendly for a newer player as well. Uh, established membership, so there is a client a group that uh, we can we can get, begin to uh, add to as a nucleus. Obviously, it's got a newer clubhouse. 
Um, and I thought, as I looked around the clubhouse, I thought it was in very good shape. Uh, location. You know, it's, it's, I gotta tell you, it's, my, it's been my dream to have a golf course this close to such uh, a major commercial hub because now we just need to capitalize on that. Most golf courses, like the Gauntlet, are eight miles out into the woods, and uh, you're trying to pull everybody that way. Uh, it's obviously a county property. I think there's good synergies there. Uh, nine holes. Nine holes can be a positive. You just gotta figure out how to sell it as a positive. Everybody thinks 18 holes, 18 holes, but guess what? No, nine holes is actually more common today than it was 25, 30 years ago because everybody stretched for time. So, and also leagues. Leagues are making that more common. It's already got a food and beverage operation. Um, you know, we know how that goes. A good hot dog at a golf course is critical. Um, I keep bringing up that, that shopping. I think that's important to um, make sure everybody understands that there is a public, public, public golf course right around the corner. Uh, boat ramp fee collections. I thought that was neat. I haven't exactly figured all that out in my brain yet, but we're heading that way. And I keep bringing up the cool factors. I think having a train go right through the middle of the golf course is so neat. And I can't tell you how fun that would be for me to sell that. And uh, of course the trails, I'm a runner. Uh, I love that uh, aspect of having those trails and that beautiful river. My goodness. It's, it, it, it's, it needs to be seen more from the golf course. Uh, some of the uh, some of that uh, rock features and things like that, my goodness, it's beautiful. And I think we, as we begin to uh, get more notoriety to, in Virginia, spotlighting that is gonna be critical. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, so obviously now we gotta talk about the weaknesses. How, how have we gotten to this point where the golf course has been struggling? Well, obviously there's no player development pro program really. Okay. There's been some good ideas. I've been tracking those things. Um, I just went through all the Facebook and everything that I could find. There's been some good ideas, but again, it's important to understand the master calendar of a player development program. Uh, obviously, you don't have a driving range, which hinders the creating and the development piece of the player development program. Uh, there's going to be some struggles to overcome that. Uh, small warm-up putting green. So, again, we are a big believer, and, and uh, later on in this program, we'll talk about Operation 36, one of our key components to uh, developing the game. You got to learn the game from the green back. Okay, it's important. You know, Ken, you and I, you know, you're probably going to have to give me a couple more strokes this year because I've been <laughs> practicing a lot. But, but typically, what happens is, is the uh, the, the, the player, the difference between a 36 handicap and a, and a two handicap, as we get closer to the hole, the game evens out a little bit, okay? And as we, we found that if we learn the game from the green back, that uh, players actually progress much faster and they enjoy the game. They're not beat up um, shooting and getting bored with, with the game. So there's, I won't get into that whole program, but anyways, I think one of the weaknesses is small putting greens. Um, uh, no real learning programs for the kids and the adults. We would overcome that very quickly. Marketing, um, consistency, and, and ultimately branding. Branding is important in any, anything. You gotta, you gotta know who you are, and you gotta tell everybody who you are. And so we would, we would do that very. I'm sorry for getting in your way. All right. right. <clears throat> um, you know, one of the uh, issues that I saw that uh, early on was uh, the parking lot. We're gonna, we would get in and we would grow that business and the parking lot is very small. So we're gonna have to overcome the fact that you just don't have enough parking spaces. So, uh, but we'll overcome that. Obviously some safety issues, any, any business owner, the first thing you wanna look for is safety issues. I saw some safety issues there. Um, and of course, poor conditions in the parking lot. No cart barn. I think the first thing that you see when you walk up to the facility is you see kind of some ratty carts and, and they're kind of scattered. It doesn't look real professional. It doesn't look like you got a system. And I think it's important that you got to have a system. And that was one of the things that I saw. Lack of storage within the building. So uh, we're just going to take a long time. Uh, exposed maintenance building. Um, I think aesthetics is very, very important. Um, and I think uh, seeing your uh, maintenance equipment all over the place is not a good good thing and then I think it's also 
uh, telling people that are using that boat ramp that, uh, hey, there's a $25,000 piece of equipment in there, maybe we can come back at night and steal that thing. So probably not a good idea. Um, food and beverage, uh, <coughs> there's just a lot to, that needs to be changed in that food and beverage. You gotta have a plan, you gotta know how that food and beverage operation is gonna complement all your programs and initiatives and things of that nature. Uh, we get to course conditions. My, my biggest thing with the golf course is, is the number two reason that people get out of the game. Number two reason, well, it depends on what study you, you look at, but the number two reason that people get out of the game is frustration. And so if you're trying to, to, to get people excited about the game, I'm telling you, I've got some crazy ideas that would make traditionalist head spin about um, making the game more user friendly. And I like this golf course a lot. But what I didn't like was how small the greens were and how fast they were and how sloping they were because that's going to take a person that's maybe kind of not a real good player and they're going to be hitting two great shots and then they four or five putt. I saw that potential very quickly. So there would be some things uh, from an agronomy standpoint that we would want to do to probably slow down the greens, keep the integrity of the greens, maybe enlarge them just a little bit, but those are uh, fairly quick fixes. Um, <coughs> I think, you know, we talk about knowing who you are in business. Um, I see this mistake all the time with nine-hole golf courses. Nine-hole golf courses pretending that they're, they're an 18-hole golf course. This is a nine-hole golf course. I, I think that the tees, uh, it's good to have lots of tees, but to try to use that as front nine, back nine, you've got to know who you are. You're a nine-hole golf course, period. That's all it is. Okay? One of the big things that I... I wanted to point out was the routing. I think the way it's set up right now, it's, it's unsafe. And from a walker standpoint, it's not a very fluid motion. Going from hole number four, walking across hole number nine, under the railroad tracks, going over to hole number five, and then coming back. I think that's not very, I would change that. I would change that routing system. Um, well, I think one of the, they, I mentioned it earlier, and it's, it's in there, but you're a public golf course. You want to be a public golf course. Public golf courses are cool. It's not that country club thing is, is there, and there is definitely a group that should participate in that, but public golf courses are becoming, thanks to Top Golf, public golf courses are becoming really cool. And uh, the first thing that happens, the first mistake that's made is you drive down Country Club Drive to get to your public golf course. And I think that's, that's telling the story. Now, it's something that we can overcome for sure, but it is a public golf course, and it is open to anybody who wants to play. Um, I'm not a big fan of the first thing that I did at the gauntlet. The first thing that I saw when I got there 15 years ago, I saw this thing on the scorecard, and it said, colored shirts, slacks, and something else. Anyways, uh, I ripped up that scorecard, and we got rid of that. I think it's a sport. Golf is a sport. You should dress that dress athletic, and that's that's good enough for me. Whatever that is, Tiger Woods is starting to change that anyways. Collar shirts are going away. Pretty soon, the pros are going to be in shorts. I'm sure of it. Um, okay, so there are several weaknesses. We have to admit our weaknesses before we can overcome those. So knowing knowing those as best that we can is a good thing. Uh, but the important thing is, is you got to be able to look and see opportunities. We, we, I heard somebody earlier say the potential. I think that was you, Ken. Um, it does have potential. It really does. Um, so opportunities, obviously the partnership with New Direction, we have a lot of experience. Uh, as I mentioned, I admitted my age. I've been in this business for 33 years, and uh, I've seen a lot, a lot of changes in it. Um, I've got a superintendent that would be the head of our agronomy who has uh, also had many years of experience, 20 some years of experience, and uh, one of his stops was Valhalla. So those of you that are golfers know that Valhalla was the host of the 2008 PGA Championship. Uh, he's done a wonderful job getting the gauntlet to where it's at today. Uh, and then of course uh, we have Kayla, our secret weapon. Everybody in the whole middle Atlantic has been trying to steal her from me, but I got her. Um, so, uh, fresh start. It's an opportunity to push reset on Front Royal. That means you know, new 
new logos, and I've got my daughter already working. She sent me a sample of a, a logo to this morning, um, kind of an idea of what it would look like, integrating FNR and all this kind of stuff. It was beautiful. Um, we uh, obviously we have an opportunity for Front Royal to um, take the lead on player development and bring some of these activities and programs to the whole county and also some of the other golf courses. So we see an opportunity to have everybody uh, benefit as benefit from that. We've already started things. There's a lot of things I didn't know. I hope that this thing is going to work out for everybody. So I've got a lot of things already kind of in, in works, just in case it does. Uh, if it doesn't, no problem. Uh, uh, there would be some branding with all the websites, the Facebooks, the, the Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Of course, one of the most important thing is signage. You know, throughout the facility. Right now, it's got some. It had some really nice marble signs, and at one point, when it was the Country Club, it. Uh, it says Front Royal Country Club on it. Um, again, it's not a country club, so we would have to change all those things out. Uh, you know, what we found at, at when we first took over the gauntlet in uh, January 2018, uh, we had all these programs, all these cool programs. We had leagues, we had tournaments, we had social activities, but we didn't have a food and beverage operation to complement that. So first thing that we did was uh, we knocked out a couple of walls, we uh, built a bar, and uh, that bar literally paid for itself in three months, because now everybody said, oh great, now we don't have to just leave right after the, tur the tournament's over or the league's over, we can stay and <coughs> enjoy it, and it created an atmosphere. The only mistake I did made was I didn't build it big enough, but we know that, we learned that. Um, obviously. One of the opportunities is that we would have a sister course in the gauntlet, okay? So there would be pull from Stafford and Fredericksburg up to this way, and, and vice versa. It would make the um, memberships, the connections to, the, to Front Royal even more appealing because now you're going to have that connection down to uh, uh, Fredericksburg and Stafford as well. Um, so, so some of the some of the things that we would be looking at doing is uh, remodeling, you know, giving it a fresh look, you know, and like I said, I think the interior of the clubhouse looks pretty good in 1998, and so it needs to be refreshed. And 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 this is a common theme. I see it. You can probably go over to uh, across the street. I see kind of a, uh, across the street from Front Royal and see a similar thing. I saw it when I visited a few of the other facilities. It's one of the last things golf course operators want to do is to buy new furniture and put new floors down and give it a new look. And uh, so the 90s are still being carried over. So uh, so these obviously are some of the threats that we look at. Um, the big one obviously is you got a lot of competition in this small area. And so, it's, uh, and I'm not gonna kid anybody, that we're not done losing golf courses. Uh, more golf courses will, will close. Uh, hopefully not in this area, but they are definitely closing. Uh, others uh, may steal the idea. I, we, we get that a lot. I don't mean to brag. That's not my nature, but uh, we get that a lot. People try to, to uh, steal our ideas. Unfortunately, what happens is they don't understand the whole process, and so some of the ideas will fail, but uh, that, that happens. You know, we, we, last year was a good weather year. Year before was not such a good weather year. Wettest year on record. Um, that can create a lot of problems, not only for just no play, but it also can create a lot of problems uh, for disease in the greens and other things can happen. Uh, so those are some of the threats. Uh, obviously, 1996 <coughs> happened. It could happen again. And we hopefully we didn't lose that much of the golf course, but it could. Uh, disease of the greens, we're pretty comfortable with uh, how to manage that, but occasionally you, you get hit with crazy things like nematodes and, and they'll, they'll eat your greens and next thing you know you're in trouble. Um, and the current base, I think what's, what's scary sometimes is, is we are outside the box thinkers. There's no question. From a technology standpoint, from how we, we the player initiatives that we have, we are outside the box thinkers. And sometimes those that have been connected to the golf course for some time get a little worried about all the crazy ideas that we're doing and you're changing, change, change. I'm a big believer in change because change means you're moving forward. 
Um, but I do see that resistance, but I don't worry about that too much because if, at the end of the day, I know I'm, I'm benefiting everybody. I think I got that question when I was at this last meeting. You know, what are you going to do about some ideas and, and suggestions? I love, I love those. You have to hear those, just like this board has to hear them when somebody comes up and gives three minute spiels on what their ideas are. Now, what, I, what you have to do and what I have to do is I have to take that the knowledge that I have, the background that I have, and that idea, and figure out how's that going to benefit everybody? Not just that individual, but how's that going to benefit everybody? And if it does, then it's a fantastic idea. That's what we'll do. Okay? Um, just real quickly, I'll go through some of these. Uh, this is my daughter's sketches of some ideas, obviously, right there. That is just an idea that we had um, to give it a fresh look. Uh, that's actually where the pro shop counter is right now. Those of you that haven't been in there. Uh, so you have, so one of the things that we saw was that we had a lot of restrooms in that small little space. We'd probably take some of the restrooms out and just go down to the, the two restrooms and uh, open it up a little bit. Uh, I really like the idea of selling a beer, a hot dog, and a round of golf and a sleeve of golf balls at the same spot. And then from a labor standpoint, I like it. And I also think it's kind of a cool look. And I think our industry is heading that way instead of this pro shop and over here in the food and beverage over here, I think it's starting to come together. And I like the idea, and that's where we kind of went with this. Oh, did I lose the slide? Was that it? No. You exited. You exited. Did I hear exit? I got you. Yeah, it's okay. Hang on. Uh, yeah, right there. Okay, so. Um, this is our Operation 36 program. This is our learning program. We think it, it's going to be an awesome fit at a facility like this. Um, what we would make sure of is that the moment you turned on Country Club Drive, you would know that there was a learning program called Operation 36. And that's what, where, the, where the wheels are going to start to turn. Um, <clears throat> big piece of our business is, is uh, lessons. Okay. It is a, it's an important piece, and uh, right now there's that wasn't even a, a line item in the the, the, uh, the state revenue sources. I knew I needed the water. <laughs> okay, that's kind of how Operation 36 works. We work from the green back. So you start at 25 yards. The goal is to get everybody shooting 36 before they go to the next level. So if you're 25 yards and you're shooting 37s and 38s, you're not ready to go to 50 yards. If you're shooting 36, 35, 34 or better, then you're ready to go to 50 yards and we just keep working them back. And what it does is it begins to spotlight where we need to help that student. And we think this, this facility can be a really, and we've already talked to uh, the developers of Operation 36 because nobody's really taken it to the golf course and really made tee boxes and things of that nature on the facility. And that's kind of where my head is at. But, I'm telling you, I can go on forever. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this was just another clubhouse remodel that we were looking at, um, kind of moving things around. We got, well, I really like the banquet room. It's just a, it's a big space. How do you use it? And then how do you use the other, uh, the other uh, parts of the building? So that's kind of just an idea, concept that we came up with. And uh, again, <clears throat> I just was really trying to challenge my daughter's the educational dollars that I'm spending, like, okay, make me something. So that's actually the, the banquet room where we have the bar back behind it. That would also be in, my, in our minds right now. That would be kind of a check-in area for everything. And then a very casual area throughout the <coughs> I thought the uh, fireplace was a beautiful asset. <clears throat> I guess I got to that one already. Okay. So that is the, the end of my presentation. As you can see, uh, we've got a lot of different ideas. Uh, we are a new company, um, but we've already proven ourselves in the Stafford area that uh, we can be that leader in the golf industry, and uh, we can overcome some pretty difficult times uh, if they're thrown at us. And uh, we're just excited. We think we're the perfect fit for a community like this. So. Uh, I guess now I'll just leave it to questions that you might have. Anybody? How new is new? How new is new? Uh, the company started January 29, 
So, Mike, how many years have you been at the Gauntlet? Uh, I started at the Gauntlet uh, July 7, 2005. 2005. Yeah. So, so yeah. you got the management contract in 2018. I did. Yeah. Yeah. At, so, at the same course, with the same county. With the what? With the same county. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was always the, uh, uh, the the liaison to the county for our old, for the company that I worked for, so it became a pretty easy transition for me to take that one. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I would have said I've done the due diligence as far as reaching out to Stafford, the Park and Rec director, and the county administrator, and certainly you're high on their list. Uh, and the turnaround that you've been able to do, uh, again, something along the lines that, you know, the appetite's not there for the county to continue to manage it and see $150,000, $200,000 plus losses per year. Mm -hmm. And this represents, I think, the best thing that we've seen in the years of trying to reach out for, one, continuing golf at a historic you know, golf course in our community generating additional revenue, um, tourism revenue potentially, mm -hmm. but meals and, you know, meals and lodging tax revenue is something we've been trying to keep continuing to push as an asset for our community. We'd like to think we have more golf holes per capita than any other place in Virginia. But, um, you know, I think um, Mike thinks outside the box and brings some new ideas and, and I think what it's going to take for a nine hole course to survive. Is it different than the traditional stuff that Chris and the rest of us have been talking about? Yes, but I think in a good way. And that it brings some things that we haven't really thought of and, and kind of pushes the envelope. Um, and I think probably most importantly, at the bottom line, what they're looking at doing is a three-year deal with the county to assume management. And I'll go ahead and throw this out there because we'll talk about it in our meeting. $100,000 per year. Um, to operate and they assume everything else. So it caps our losses um, and gives them three years to make a go out of it. And um, at the end of the three years, if it's working, you know, which we hope it would, mm -hmm. then we renegotiate for an extension. Mm -hmm. Is that the way you envision it? Absolutely. We talked about it. Um, so it caps our losses, gives it a fresh new idea, I think brings in money from the outside and allows the facility to be revamped and remarketed, rebranded uh, in a totally different way, not on taxpayer dollars per se, but at uh, the developer or the vendor's cost. Anybody else like me to miss Ken? Henry, anything? I'd... No, I just am excited about the youth, the, the programs that I've always wondered why one County didn't have a, something connected to PGA mm -hmm. <clears throat> and being connected to the PGA will be, I guess they don't have it in Winchester either. <coughs> Winchester does. Mean, Winchester yeah. has something and so does Buckier. Yeah. Buckier so straight in between. Yeah. yeah. So you all have working with the youth there at the Ghana now, mm -hmm. a program with them. So yeah. I think that's a. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's, we, we've been in talks with the uh, regional director of the PGA Junior League program and uh, he's very excited about the opportunity to get the PGA Junior League to this area. I, I, me. Uh, that's okay. I was like, what was that? You said the, the 36 program? Operation 36? Yeah, and that was to try to get people to get to 36 for the nine holes? Yeah, yeah. So see, there you go. I can do 36 per hole. <laughs> you what? I could do I, If you do 36 for each hole, I'll be. Oh, no, no. We'd have you down. We got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. No. As long as we slow down the speed of the degrees, because I don't know if I can pass it. So, no. it. Yeah. on your presentation, you have state of the art technology. So, what is that? Oh, um, well, we, we try to pride ourselves in staying as cutting edge as possible. So, those of you, can I just get a show of hands if everybody that plays golf or has played in a golf tournament? Okay. Played in a golf tournament over the past <clears throat> however many years, what we're used to, for example, is um, Mr. Assistant Pro up there doing his fancy calligraphy on the, the scoreboards and all that kind of stuff. And it looks beautiful, some better than others. Uh, we don't do that at all. Everything we do is scored on an app. And so, um, and we've taken this, actually, uh, Ken brought a group from Blue Ridge Shadows to our facility. We did all the scoring on, 
on an app, and you could see it in the clubhouse. You can actually even see it online. If your buddy's playing and you're stuck at work, you can see it online. Uh, you can see that he just made a bogey, and then you can send him a message and say, you better get your act together. Um, we're the only ones in the area that do that. Uh, it's an additional cost, but it is, again, the cool factor, and uh, uh, there's uh, many other things that go for it. So that's one of the things. Uh, we, we just brought in a, a simulator at the gauntlet. So we took one of the, the 19th hole, and we said, this space doesn't do anything in the winter. Let's turn it into a simulator. We invested in it. Now we have 50 people signed up for a seven-week league that are coming in when it's 25 degrees outside. So we're cutting edge that way. Um, when it comes to our website, when it comes to if you've watched us on Facebook, we do things different. Kayla and I talk a lot. Okay? And you think I talk a lot? Let her lose. Okay? But she, she makes more sense than I do. Um, but, uh, so we do things a lot that way uh, from the social media. I'm, I classify myself as kind of an older guy, but I'm trying to get this social media, so I kind of get that. We're staying on top of that as best we can. Um, the list goes on and on. So the other handicaps, I think we stay on top of, and we're kind of leading the charge on how handicaps need to happen. So what we sent, first thing that I did is I sent one of our representatives to the, you know, because the whole handicap system got re redone this year. Okay, we sent our guy to it. He knows it inside and out. Then we had semi, uh, seminars for all the public to come and understand all the changes that are taking place. And then the, the, the other thing that we did is we took out the computer in the clubhouse. So every clubhouse has a computer that everybody likes to go and post their scores in. We took that out. We're forcing everybody to use their phones. Everybody's got a smartphone except for Frank O'Connor at our club. Um, we're forcing them to use their phones because it's easier. So that's how we do it. We stay cutting edge that way. And of course, Operation 36. I think the idea of building the youth program is great in that it's building the next generation of golfers. Mm -hmm. But two, our local, just, our, just look at our two high schools, you got like five, seven kids on the golf team, fairly weak. Um, you know, traditionally, if you went out, you made the golf team, right? Um, but you like to build it so that you're, they're playing at middle school, working up. So by the time they get to eighth, ninth grade, and they're ready to play high school golf, that they have a good working knowledge of, of how the game works and have can actually play and compete and win. I think I'm sure the local golf coaches would appreciate the opportunity, just like. Uh, when we started some of our youth volleyball programs a few years back and started to build those programs a little bit, that you're, getting, you're seeing more players now yeah. come to the system, and it's making our team stronger at the end of the day. You're getting travel teams, so you know, the more the kids are playing, the better they're going to eventually get. So, and the same with golf, I think that if you can get them out and get them playing, you know, Shenandoah, some of the other courses, we, we don't charge the youth, the, the golf teams, they can go out and play mm -hmm. uh, walking for free or pay to, to ride, but I think having uh, having the leagues and having some other programs will help build them and develop them oh, yeah. at an earlier age. Yeah. yeah, and again, you know, our coil's got to be the, the leader in, in uh, high school golf, promoting high school golf for sure. Uh, we have, we support three high schools at uh, the Gauntlet, uh, three Stafford high schools, and uh, uh, we've seen we we see a lot more participation in the high school programs. Um, but times, it's, it, there's some busy times, and everybody, all the kids are going from one sport to the next. So it's, we're not seeing the, the depth that we wanted to see. We wanted to see kids in you know, teams that were at four, five, six, seven players, maybe they could break 80. That's what we, our goal was, and it still is our goal, but we haven't quite seen that yet. But then the fact that we have 22 kids coming out for a golf team, for Broke Points golf team, uh, I think it was... 18 or 19 that came out for Mountain View's team. So at one point, I think we had close to 60 kids out there for tryouts um, for those three teams. So that was pretty darn cool. So, so the proposal is that there's it's a we would pay them $100,000 a year to run the golf course, and who who is doing the capital investments? Right here. So you guys are going to redesign the clubhouse yeah. and redesign the the greens yeah, and all turn, the turn on that investment. Yeah. And understand too that you know that club out there needs a manager, it needs a greenskeeper, and I don't believe that you're going to get any quality of what you're getting here for that same amount of money plus benefits. So that's all a package deal as well. How about 
<clears throat> the instructor that you're talking about for this? Well, here's here's the reality. The reality is is that uh, I've built um, a pretty strong team at the Gauntlet. So initially, we have to come in and we got to create a culture from what? That's right here. So initially, that's what's got to happen. Is there's going to be some things that um, we have to change. For example, the day that I was out there, there was four people in four carts, and that's going to be me and Kayla setting the precedence that we this is how we operate we also have high energy and we want that high energy to be exposed initially when we change things so there's that's where it's going to come from initially and then as we build our team down at the gauntlet everybody gets a little bit uh, trained on how we do things then we start moving pieces around yeah, so but initially it's going to be right here a lot and understand too that out at the country club, a lot of people play, uh, pay and don't play. Pay, you know what I mean? They may pay for nine holes and they play eighteen. There's really no supervision out there, and I think that's what he's going to be bringing out there. Even though we're not making a lot of money, there there may be money there, just people aren't paying for it. I was actually talking to Kent out there last Saturday, and he said he caught a kid with his own car key. Wow. Yeah. So this kind of shows you kind of where we're at. You know, we need supervision, and I feel like Mike's going to be a good supervisor out there. Yeah, it's always a game. It's always a game to try to figure out how to outsmart those that are doing those kinds of things, and, and uh, you don't, you, you can't get frustrated at it because it's always going to be there. And I think my years at working in uh, at East Potomac in Washington D.C., uh, uh, you can't get frustrated at it because they're going to. It's a game to them. And you just got to figure out how to outsmart them because tomorrow they're going to look at you in the face and go. How am I going to get you there? <laughs> what do you project, Mike, for after three years? Say we paid three hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars. What do you project after three years? After that point, I mean, do we just break even and we don't pay you anything anymore, or do you pay us? Yeah, it's going to be tough to see. I mean, um, you know, I put together performing that proposal. Um, I hope, I hope that we get to that point for sure. Yeah, um, where. Uh, we're making ours in a different, you know, based on the, the revenues, but uh, uh, you know, you just don't know how how quickly it's going to turn around. Uh, How's it work with the gauntlet with you guys? How's that work with the gauntlet with you guys? You you pay that county at this point in time, or is it? Even? Uh, yes, we do. We pay them at least. And if everything goes well, that's what you're hoping for here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's where we'll have to take a look at it and, and negotiate. Your four is going to look like. It'll be, a, it'll be a quantum leap to do the performance. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it will and it won't. Um, like I said, uh, the, the, key to, the key to our business, it, it, back in the 90s, early 2000s, all the way up to about 2008, uh, every, everybody lived off, lived in, uh, off of uh, tournaments. Corporate events, corporate events just don't exist anymore. They can't write off all that stuff as much, and, and they just don't exist. What makes a golf course today are leagues, and that's what this golf course would be known for: is the leagues. They'll have, uh, as, as some of, as I told the, the committee last time um, at the gauntlet, we have uh, a Monday night league that has 126 players in it. On Tuesday, we have uh, a group in the morning that plays. We have 32, 32 in that group. On Tuesday morning, on Tuesday afternoon, we have, Tuesday evening we have uh, 24. On Wednesday we have a couples league. Actually, now this year because the Monday got so big, we had to row it into Wednesday. Bottom line is we have leagues almost every day, and that's what's got to happen here. It's a nine-hole golf course. You got to sell that nine. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know if, we're, if, if based on once we get in there and we start to understand the demographics, the player types. Does that mean that we're going to have Tuesday morning leagues or Wednesday evening leagues? I don't know yet, but I know that that's going to be the key to the success of that operation. That and a few other things. How many people? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no go ahead. Yeah, whoever's ready. How many people are you pulling from? I mean, what's your the gauntlet? I don't know anything about golf courses. So. Okay. Okay, the gauntlet. How many people are in the community that you're supporting? In Stafford County? Yeah. Stafford. Well, Stafford County. Uh, has what, uh, 100,000, a little over 100,000? 
little but you're drawing from more than just Stafford County, I would assume. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stafford County, Fredericksburg, City of Fredericksburg. Those are our two main draws. It's just Stafford County, and uh, and really it's South Stafford and uh, northern part of Fredericksburg City is where we pull from the majority of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. and they have to to the golf yeah. Yeah, because we're a community of forty thousand, but right. mm -hmm. we are, our golfers are typically tourists too. We have right. lots of people come in and play golf because of the selection of golf courses that we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have four plus this one. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of golf in this area. Yeah. Doug, if if we if we decide to go with something other like this, does this take the responsibility? completely off the bus so we're our parks and recreation that that part's going to go away we don't have the, the people we don't have that we don't have the cost associated with the personnel that are currently at the club part-timers um, we would envision the advisory board still stay in place to kind of oversee the contract and meet whether it's quarterly or twice a year to see progress how things are going so that three years goes by and we know this is a good thing, it's a bad thing, let's tweak it, you know, we have, we have some feedback there. But otherwise, the, the daily oversight would be non-existent from the Parker Rec standpoint. At so, this point, how much is it costing us a year? Well, the info's in your packet last year was probably closer to 300 in part because we had to put so much effort into redoing it. Mike noted the condition of the course is in pretty good shape. <laughs> a year plus ago, it was in pretty poor shape. Well, that was the thing, though. <coughs> Probably a few months ago, we learned the nutrient credit. In order to do that, you had to go ahead and go to the courts to find out if um, to notify the heirs. And then I think Judge Athey appointed an attorney for the members, one for the town citizens, one for the county citizens, the one members. for a junior member. The whole thing, so they kind of came into a close, <coughs> and then because the talk was that we were going to maybe cease operations, that hurt membership as well. Um, we lost their uh, golf superintendent. I don't think the, it was properly maintained, as far as I think you know more obvious than I do. But you know, there's there's certain times of the year you have to do certain things as far as fertilizer, weed kill, whatever. So that really came down, uh, went by the wayside. So I think last year it was more an anomaly because if we wanted to continue this, we had to go ahead and, and um, bring it up to really good shape. And I think Chris and Henry could probably attest to it through the years. This course is probably looking better than it ever has in it's 15 or 20 shape. years. The, the, the job that that guy did, I know we paid yeah. a lot of money for him to do what he did. But I'm going to tell you, I'm a grass guy myself. And, he did about five years worth of work with a complete staff in about one year. Mm -hmm. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. I mean, literally, there was dirt on the green. So I never walked off that course in my entire life, but I did about three months after Steve had left. It was in that poor condition. And the feeling was that we need to bring it up to this, to that point, in order we can have you here and have a um, decent shot in an RFP. Mm -hmm. uh, to continue on because it does have a lot of his history to it. And I know we were had that meeting we had maybe fifteen or eighteen people, or maybe about fifteen of them were, were, were very pro keeping it open because of the historical perspective and the memories and, and all those things. And that was the thing too that, you know, we did lose some members, like you mentioned. Uh, they went to another golf course. And I think a year or two later that golf course lost them to another golf course. So they're kind of jumping around. And that's what we've been trying to, uh, to to entice them back. And I think, you know, once they see the operations, even though it's going to be different changes, it's also going to be better. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole key right there. Yeah. Well, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to have a golf course that's in good condition, or at least right. fair condition. And the most important piece to that is the greens. And, uh, you know, we had... Uh, in 2018, we had something happen at the gauntlet, but we hired a young guy who had a degree from Virginia Tech. I don't know how he got it, but he, he made a few mistakes out there, and we lost our greens literally in seven days. 
probably more like 48 hours, but we lost him in 48 hours just by some of the little mistakes that he made. <clears throat> and then the harder he tried to fix his mistakes, the, more, the worse it got. So, um, but here's here's the key. So I had a hundred uh, when I took over January 29th, 2018. We had 127 members, about 127 members. We had dirt greens because of that for eight months. I lost three members <coughs> during that time. I now have 146 members at that facility. So the key is, is that you have to build uh, programs in there so that you have that strong nucleus and you're constantly feeding that nucleus. And getting back to what the mistakes that some of the other facility, other management companies do is, is they don't, they're building the outside, but they're not building that inside. And when things happen, like you have weather conditions, or you have course condition issues or something, because those things happen, they leave you, and they're gone. And then you gotta restart all over again. And that's where, that's, that's where we'll, we'll build in programs that's constantly gonna be feed, feeding that new ways of, of players. So. I think that's the thing too, the Parks and Rec, they have to, I think the mission is to try to provide recreational activities from age five to 95. And that's what I think Dan's trying to do. We got the youth sports, the soccer's taking off, youth football, you know, we maintain the facilities and some of the other organizations run the programs. Um, and, and not all those programs make money. I guess the, the other one that, that kind of loses is the pool. But it also attracts a lot of people and you're providing something for your residents. We even have something for dogs. Yeah. At the dog park. Oh so. God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move here. <laughs> I just went on vacation, and my favorite part of the whole vacation was my dog mm -hmm. at a dog park. And, and we got saw the, my little five-pound dog, you'd understand. We got the walking trails, too, yeah. especially out there. It goes from there. We got the Rockford Park, got a Frisbee golf course, the whole yeah. thing. So I think we're really uh, providing a lot of opportunities for residents. And I don't know what the last comp plan was, but I remember when they sent out the surveys, that was one of the biggest things I think that people really appreciated was having good opportunity. Yeah, yeah that's the whole good. Thing. Yeah, so. yeah. Obviously, I've been connected to the Stafford County Parks and Rec for quite a while, and uh, and uh, you know, based on what you're saying, there's actually a little bit more going on. So that's fantastic. And that's the thing too, like you were talking about the walking trail along the river. You know, maybe that's an incentive too. You know, have a golfer out there if they beam one of the walkers, they get a free round or something. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. Whose insurance program is that? <laughs> <laughs> We just went to Nerve Golf. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, will there be financials that we'll be able to review before we vote for this? Yes. Because I would like to see. Yeah, we can get you the updated. Because in your packet, of course, this presentation was done back in 18. Um, we can get you the updated spreadsheet that says every year we have that the next month. Absolutely. And the pro forma that you're referencing, will we have access to that? Yes. And now the, the proposal is still confidential, but we can share that with the board. Right. And it's what we can't share with the public as long as we're negotiating the contract, mm -hmm. we can get that clear as well. Are you looking to start with the fiscal year? Sooner. Because I imagine that you guys want to get in there as soon as possible because yeah, exactly. it's spring growing season and stuff. So. Yeah, okay. Again, you, I, as I understand it, the superintendent that you had in here is no longer there, right? Working, he's part time. Is he part time? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So there's going to be some pre I, I did have a, a question. Yeah. You alluded to back in your presentation in November. We, we talked. Um, it was really decent what you said with the new changes to the clubhouse, but you're also wanting not just the golfer, you want to bring in the general public to and have different kinds of opportunities and events there. And yeah. can you just briefly just touch on some of those ideas or some? Um, well, yeah, I mean, um, I think you're talking about when I was referencing it back in right. October or whatever, November, November. whatever it was. October, yeah. Um, yeah, so what I see is, um, I see this, this commercial hop going on up there, and, and of course you got your typical Buffalo Wild Wings and things like that. But what I see is, I see the a deck off of this, the back of that patio, or the back of that building. It kind of stretches out to number nine, kind of wraps around this tree, and people. <laughs> she's heard this crazy idea. So I see, I see that atmosphere where people want, whether you're a golfer or not a golfer, that you're coming down to that 
um, facility to hang out. And then what I was t mentioning before was, I just hope that people are down there and they see that train go, go across there as they're sitting there. Because I just think that that whole atmosphere is, is, is really something that uh, could be a real asset to this community. Um, now, as far as some of the other ideas that we have for bringing in just uh, uh, the general public, um, Kayla, do you, do you want to speak to some of those things? For the general public? Yeah, some yeah. of the things that we do and, and some of our ideas for this. Because I'm really getting I got to where I need water and <laughs> my brain's That's starting good. to fry. Again, I'm Kayla Weaver. I'm the Director of Player Development and a part of New Direction. Um, so when we talked about, you know, the atmosphere, something that we create is weekly social events, whether it's with our leagues or it's the public, whether it's karaoke's, you know, that's kind of a fun, you know, there's so much going on with the hotels. We also partner with a company out of Pennsylvania, and I know they go to Blue Ridge Shadows, and that's called Genesis. And what we know is tourists, right? You talked about the tourists. Well, even if they're tourists and they're golfers, they want a great place to stay. So what's great is that Hub has those hotels, but also they want the local atmosphere. So what I love about the gauntlet is even if they are partaking in a beverage with us, I'm somebody who'll say, have you ever had this place? It's amazing. So here I am, the community, helping the community and those small businesses, but also the large. You know, we do have to still look at the account of the large businesses. Um, so with that atmosphere, we know that our 19th hole, and again, in our um, performance is some marketing things that I put in there in regards to our Instagram for our bar and grill, as well as our academy. And you can see, you know, we want the good food. We want it, we're actually known at the gauntlet for the wings. So our director of food and beverage, Carmen, brings this really neat palette. And what she really focuses on is food, but also local craft beer, because that's what's kind of popular right now is the local craft. So we either bring stuff in from Richmond, um, whether it's Hardywood, we're doing a Hardywood dinner night, um, or we're doing a scotch and cigar night. So I don't know, even if you're not a golfer in the room, maybe you're a scotch and cigar kind of guy or a gal. Um, my husband is a big scotch and cigar. So again, we're bringing out some heaters. So talking about that, even though it might be 30 degrees outside, you know, bring in some heaters and have a cool atmosphere. So it's creating that atmosphere, whether it's using the facility or out on the golf course. So you can kind of kind of see it both ways. Awesome. Yeah, so at the end of the day, what we look at is those kind of activities. We know that not every single one of them is going to be a home run, uh, but we're not afraid to do it. We know that if we like it that well, then the way we perform is through that consistency of it. But what we hope is that we do this one and we do this one and maybe we get five people to this one and guess what all of a sudden we got to, we connected with them and we figured out that we have something that we can offer them beyond that maybe it's a room to rent maybe it's a boat to rent uh, maybe it's uh maybe it's golf lessons maybe it's golf maybe it's their their sons uh tried every other sport haven't found a lot of success with it oh you guys have junior golf pga junior league cool for them so that's what we hope for for some of the social activities but the bottom line, you know, everybody in Front Royal has got to know Front Royal, right? They have to know Front Royal, and that's the key. And that's and we feel like we are battle tested as a company because we operate a county golf course that is pushed at the farthest point in Stafford County, in the oldest park in Stafford County, in the most under underdeveloped part of Stafford County and we're constantly fighting to pull people out. So this, I'm looking, looking at that property going, oh my God, you're in the center. <laughs> this is beautiful. Okay, it's a great opportunity. So, hope that answered. It did, thank you. Okay, good. <clears throat> Without getting into too much specifics, it's only the detail, but I don't, I don't think we had that many so far, but I guess we do our membership on a calendar year basis, and we probably had maybe 25 or 30. That have already signed yeah, yeah. some I forget exactly. I just didn't know how the voting handle that to honor those well. for this oh, yeah. year and because yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure that question would come up. So yeah, yeah you know. of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, Absolutely. that's the detail to be, yeah. you know, like everything else. Today's just a broad yeah, overview. We would honor and then we would show that we got something even better right. even better right. to it. So. I'm gonna add too, you know, before you guys vote, just remember this is a legacy from Mr. Carson and he did a whole lot for this town, you know, and to 
leave this as, <laughs> as a part, you know, as a as a memory to his son. I think it'd be I think it'd be and we were, he was the first one here. It was the first Scottish court built in the state of Virginia, if I'm not mistaken. So it has a lot of history. And I think we should honor that also too, if you guys think about that. So yeah, Chris, it's a good point. I mean that the scary part is and that's where this whole industry is is stuck. You know, there's tradition and there's moving forward. And and there's a balance. And and I like the design. I just think it needs an update. It needs an update in uh, the look and feel. You know, you know, I, uh, the gentleman that's taking care of the course now. Uh, I met him. I can't remember his name. Ray. Ray, fantastic guy, doing a great job. One of the things that he's trying to do is he's pushing Bermuda out as far as he can. Well, that's great because Bermuda is less more cost effective, right? It's an easier turf to, to manage for the most part. And, uh, you know, for example, the only problem right now is that the fairways are cut too short, or too, too skinny. So visually, it, when you, it, it doesn't necessarily map to the tee box, and they're too narrow. They were wider. Yeah, they need to be They were wider. wider. He did that because of the irrigation system, yeah. and he wanted to try to keep the green as long as he could yeah. for the summer. But I'm always looking at it from the, the player standpoint. What's well, the most fair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the amateur shoots 97, and it's been the same no matter all the changes in golf. Um, but uh, and, and and of course some of the some of the trees and and tee boxes and yeah, there's just there's some updates, but the integrity would have to stay the same. So not not many golf courses are on the natural register. Yeah. Virginia Landmarks Registry, and they're also it's a Civil War battlefield site, so you got like and Bill Cassidy also too. That's really important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think one of the things they're going to find uh, and will find that they capitalize on us, but undercapitalized is the river. Yeah. Because you know there's a lot of opportunity there mm -hmm. to attract in many many venues opportunities, and if you think outside the box. You can think outside the box. Yeah. For instance, why would you have a a, uh, a music night on the river yeah. and a gathering yeah. right there? I mean, where can you do that? There's deep water there too. Yeah. <laughs> so Which is good. Yeah. Maybe you have a houseboat party. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's creative stuff. It's just a matter of uh, organizing it and getting the following. So it is, it is a market. It oh yeah. Is, it's all market. Yeah, we got we got a lot of ideas and. and I'm sure you guys are going to bring some ideas as well. Mr. Chair, so the consensus of the board is just keep moving forward. And we can, uh, we got some due diligence stuff to pull together for the board members and we can start working on a draft um, agreement that can be presented to the board later. Um, but obviously, sooner than, sooner than later, um, but we can get started and pulling that information together for everybody. Thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely.